Hey friends, welcome back to DIYs with Sonia, where we create beautiful high-end looks for way less. Today I got a very special video for you. It's a mega compilation of 20 of my favorite fall pottery barn dupes. These are all projects I've shared in previous videos, but I wanted to bring them all together for you in one seamless, uninterrupted viewing experience. Whether you're new here or just want some fresh inspiration, I hope you find some DIY ideas that you'll love as much as I do. But before we dive into the DIYs, I'm excited to share that today's video is in partnership with Life uh, Basis. I've been showing you, <clears throat> I'll be showing you their amazing mini electric scrubber, which has become an absolute game changer in my home. Let me tell you all about it. So this is the Life Basis mini electric scrubber. And let me tell you, this little gadget has been such a time saver for me. It's perfect for cleaning those hard to reach spots like tile grout, kitchen countertops, sink, and even those tricky DIY messes that seem impossible to scrub off. It comes with multiple brush heads so you can use it on different surfaces without worrying about damage. What I love about it is how lightweight and easy it is to handle. It's cordless, which means no more fussing with plugs while cleaning. It's also waterproof, so you can safely use it around the bathroom or kitchen sink. Plus, the powerful motor means you're getting a deep clean without putting it all that putting putting in all that elbow grease. If you're someone who loves DIY projects like I do, you know how messy things can get, especially with paint spills, glue, and other crafting debris. This scrubber has made it so much easier to clean up after my DIYs, which leaves me more time to create. I will have a link which you will find in the description box below. Now let's jump right into the DIYs. The first project that I'm going to be creating, I have a tremendous savings here for you. I did pick up this vase for $5, but this is not the, pro the item that I'm going to be duping. Over on Pottery Barn, I had found this um, vase and uh, this look actually the vase with hydrangea bundle and the hydrangea bundles here is $70 but I really love this whole look and that's what I'm going to be recreating so as you can see my vase was a little bit taller and a little bit thinner but I think I can achieve that same look now for the hydrangea flowers I did get mine out of the garden and if you let your hydrangeas dry in a vase they will get that um, dusty green look to them a little bit and they do last for quite a while just sitting in a vase with no water or anything like that but I did a look over on uh, Amazon as well as uh, the, I've seen a couple of the one Timu had a few for a lot less um, than just um, than $70 I think the most expensive one was on Amazon Canada for about a 40, but you get a, a, a much larger bundle. So look around, look around your garden. <laughs> you might find uh, the fall foliage that you like, and it looks really nice in your vase. So to get this uh, vase painted, I am going to be, so as you saw, I mixed white and creamy color, um, paint this is chalk paint so it's a lot thicker I was going to add flour to it to make it even more thicker but my uh, creamy cream colored old, old ochre uh, chalk paint was pretty dry so it was actually quite thick as you can see the reason why I mixed the two colors is because uh, the old ochre was too yellow uh, yellowish and the white was too bright so I just wanted to kind of tone down the brightness of the white so that's why I mix them. And I am applying a fairly thick layer because I want that um, thickness to show in the vase. So um, I forgot to mention that I will leave the links to the Amazon hydrangeas that I found in the description box in case if you wanted to uh, venture out and get some for yourself. Um, also Dollarama, if you're located in Canada, I've seen hydrangea flowers there as well. I've never seen them at Dollar Tree, but definitely at 
uh, Dollarama at Michael's store. I did not see that color, although I do know that my mother-in-law had gotten herself some hydrangeas like that a while back, so it's worth uh, looking into it. Um, I was just checking on the website. I think making over vases is one of the most... Um, affordable ways to add the those um, look for less high-end dupes to your decor because they tend to be um, a lot cheaper at thrift stores and uh, usually you can find the style of them like the high-end stores have them and with a little bit of paint you can achieve that high-end look so right now i am just trying to blend so there's not none of the brush strokes are showing and i'm just using a crafter sponge to do that since i like to show you everything i will show you this step as well but i do find that this did not um uh, really add much to the vase I wanted to just dar darken uh, the certain spots just a little bit but I didn't want to go too much with this brown because it I feel like it has a bit of a purplish tinge to it so I went really really lightly just to dab on but you can completely skip this step if you wanted to and just uh, move on to the next step and the next step is optional as well. If you want, you can just leave it at this point or you can go and get some dirt and get dirty. My camera ran out of space, my card, so I had to resort to my phone. So here we are. So all I take is um, before the vase completely dries, I just add some dirt to it, uh, sprinkle it. You want this to be... For this particular pr uh, project, you want the dirt to be dry. I've done projects where the dirt is wet and then it just kind of paints everything, but then you can't uh, sprinkle it on and the vase has to be dry. So I let this dry completely. And then once it's dried completely, I take a brush and I just brush the dirt off and kind of try and blend it in a little bit. And that's it. And now I went out to my garden and clipped some hydrangeas, added them to my vase. And here it is on my shelf. I think it turned out so nice. And I think it's a pretty close um, dupe for the one at a pottery barn and for a lot less. This one was definitely inspired by Instagram reels that I've been watching or TikTok reels. Um, I picked this spider up at Dollar Tree for $1.50 and I wanted to give it a more of a nicer look. So I'm just adding some Mod Podge, which was suggested by one of my subscribers. It just makes the paint stick to the surface a little bit easier because this type of material is a material that the paint will slide right off. So the first step was to add Mod Podge everywhere where I was going to paint it. I did actually end up painting it in another spot that I did not add Mod Podge because it's just the way I operate but nevertheless the paint worked out fine now this is not necessarily an outdoor item but it could be if that's what you want it to use it I'm actually using it as a candle holder I'm using a heavy candle that I, that, that I placed on it on my coffee table uh, I think this just uh, adding gold to it made it look really high-end and uh, expensive you've seen these at home sends ranging anywhere from 9.99 up to uh, 30 dollars so i am quite happy that i managed to do this one for under two dollars
moving on to my next project I have had these um, pumpkins now for a while and they've been just sitting in my bin this one that I'm cutting out is from a Dollar Tree that I have painted and the next one is from the thrift store uh, I that was actually one of my very first fall DIYs that I've ever made on my other channel and I've painted it in duck egg blue uh, I'm going to be recreating this look I love absolutely love these uh, candles from Pottery Barn but at over a hundred dollars for a small one I think it's just a little too pricey and I'm going to be achieving that look by uh, uh, getting these tea light candles uh, the battery operators tea lights that I picked up at Dollar Tree for $1.50 so my project cost me $1.50 but if you were to get the two pumpkins from the dollar store it would be extra $3.00. So again, another project that's coming in under $5, and this is for two, whereas that's a price for one. Uh, so I think this is a great savings again, and you can get pretty close to that look. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm just going to cut out holes big enough to uh, to fit my my tea lights now i was originally going to paint these but i am quite happy with the color that they are at i will be whitewashing them just to achieve that look that the pottery barn candles have but i think that will be the extent of this project there's not a lot lot, lot of involvement um but if you wanted to paint these you can definitely paint them um any color you want they don't even have to be the colors that the pottery barn has if those colors don't suit your decor but the you definitely want to make sure that you cut the holes big enough that you can stick those tea lights in tightly so that way they don't fall through but they're not hard to take out because you're going to want to be turning those on and off so once the holes were big enough for my tea lights, I went ahead and mixed my white paint with some water. And you want this to be fairly watered down so that way you can just brush the paint on and then brush it, uh, then uh, clean it off. And I will just use a rag to wipe it off. This is a fairly easy thing to do and I'm adding the paint into the creases and then like I said I'm going to blend it or wipe it off with a rag So I just want to say if this is your first time stopping by welcome my name is Sonia and here on this channel I share tons of different high-end dupes as well as furniture makeovers and I am very excited for what the next few months are have what I have in store for you guys for next few months so I would love it if you considered subscribing and becoming a part of my YouTube family I am so very pleased with the way these turned out and I can't wait to start using them in my decor and I love the fact that the Dollar Tree tea lights flicker a little bit so it kind of gives it that um, even more that high end look. So for my next uh, DIY, I am going to be recreating these uh, pumpkin pillows or pump or uh, fabric pumpkins. They don't necessarily have to be pillows, depending on which size you go for, I guess. As you can see, they range from forty-two to fifty-nine dollars, minus free, since I went into my stash of different fabrics because I have a 
laundry basket full of fabric scraps under my table so I just wanted to grab something that would work the the ones on the picture are more of like a, a Sherpa almost style which you can totally create that with blankets you can find lots of blankets different different styles of blankets at thrift stores a dollarama carries blankets as well that you can pick i actually picked one up for my fall decor that i'm going to be styling with just recently for five dollars which i thought was a pretty good deal and that's pretty much what they range in price at the thrift stores as well so I had found this piece of burlap uh, big enough for what I was going to do. So I'm just going to um, hot glue two sides, but you want to hot glue three sides. I just folded mine, so um, that's why. But if you have two pieces that you're attaching together, you want to have them glued on three sides and leaving one open. Then once you have hot glued them and they are no longer hot and the glue had set, you want to turn it inside out and then you want to go ahead and uh, stuff it. Now you could stuff it with many things. I have done similar projects where I just took plastic bags and I stuffed it in because I had lots of plastic bags that is no longer the case since we don't have plastic bags anywhere but i did have an old pillow with some stuffing in it the only problem that i ran into the pillow stuffing is kind of stuck together and it was really hard to separate and make it kind of form i think if you were to buy brand new pillow stuffing it would be a lot more fluffier but i made it work regardless so once you fill it as much as you want to fill it you can have it firmer you can have it also more like softer that is totally up to you so once you fill it you grab the the top and you bunch it up and then this is where you tie it up shut and then you're going to take some rope and uh, just wrap it around so you can create those pumpkin lines. This is a great time to manipulate the stuffing as well and kind of make sure that uh, all the little grooves are the same size. Mine was giving me a little bit of a hard time, but I think I did do a pretty good job at the end. And once you've um, got your pumpkin the way you want it to look you're going to work on the stem and for that I was using nautical rope and I started at the bottom and wrap it all the way around the top I also cut my top a little bit just because I thought it was a little it would have been a little too long put the hot glue at the bottom like the starting point of the the start and then um, I finished it off with the hot glue at the top and then you can also manipulate it kind of bend it any way you want to it will will bend <music> And here it is. I think it turned out really nice. I do like it. I think it's going to go great with my more natural uh, decor that I'm going for this fall. And uh, like I said, you can um, use any fabric that you want for this.
I am going to be starting with a wreath. I am going to be making two of them. And for this, I had purchased these mini skulls at Dollarama, as well as this moss um, and some ravens. Um, these all came from Dollarama. The wine, the twine wreaths I had on hand, these were actually my old um, fall decor uh, wreaths that I had taken apart because I last year I had purchased some new hay wreaths that I wanted to have so I kept these I did use them at um, springtime but they have been just sitting on the shelves ever since then so I did take my Athenian black uh, chalk paint and I'm going to add a little bit of water to it because it is kind of at its end and it gotten a little thick and I wanted to water it down as much as I could and I'm going to just dab some paint all over these wreaths I'm not looking for full coverage I just wanted to add a little bit of black to the wreath now you can buy these wreaths and Michaels I think I've seen them for around $30 that are fully black if that's what you would like to do I often just go to value village and buy random wreaths just for the uh, twine is it twine or is it wine twig a uh, wreath so that way I can just uh, um, take everything off and use it um, for my DIY so that I will be making it's a lot cheaper usually I can pick up a wreath for around five dollars um, and sometimes I'm even able to use the stuff that's on it for different types of DIYs so I do this for both because it's, if you um, are new to my channel I have two front doors and this year I want to go for Halloween theme in a more of a hocus pocus theme for Halloween decor on my front porch so this is why I thought these raven wreaths would look good on there I don't want it to be too flashy so I wanted to have something more adult spooky if you know what I mean so now I'm going to just do a little trial run to see how I want this moss to look like I'm almost creating like a spooky bird's nest here and once I kind of get the idea how I want it to look, um, I'm also just testing out where exactly I want to put the raven. Now, the ravens did have a little bit of a wire on the bottom, but it wasn't enough to wrap it around. It was enough just to hold it in place, but then I did have to use some hot glue and some um, twist ties to attach it. You could also probably use just a floral wire as well. It would probably work the same. So I feel like it's been a while since I've uh, shared a video. I am really not doing a really good job in posting regularly, but I am struggling a little bit with creativity as well as time. So if you can just bear with me, I am hoping to give you a few uh, Christmas DIYs which will be starting shortly after this this one goes live so just bear with me it will be a mix of new DIYs with some good old ones as well I just like I said I'm finding I have uh, lost a bit of uh, uh, creativity I guess when it comes to creating DIYs and I don't want to just make DIYs for the sake of making them with no purpose. I want to create items that I can either gift or use in my own decor. So I do want to thank all of you that have stuck around with me. And, uh, you know, because like I said, I haven't been really posting. So I just want to say thank you so much for you know, sticking around and being patient with me. I'm sure it's just like writer's block. It's a crafter's block that I'm going through. I did feel very excited to be creating these DIYs and I do love the way they turned out. I will be also sharing a decorate with me video over on my home channel where you can see how I use these in my decor and tying it into the whole hocus pocus theme.
so now i'm going to add some skulls mini skulls on the bottom of the um wreath of the bottom of the nest or the top of the nest at the bottom of the bird um this is kind of to give you an illusion of the bird is a lot larger than the skulls kind of thing i don't know it's it's a vision that i've had i at this point i felt like the wreath needed a little bit of something else so i'm going to add these spiders that i got at dollar tree i thought they were a great price for dollar fifty for two of these they look really good um, they look really high end so i wanted to add these and i think this was what the wreath needed and now i'm just going to add some ribbon now i did add the checkered ribbon the buffalo plaid ribbon onto it I was contemplating about doing the burlap ribbon as well, but I went with the buffalo plaid and now I was looking at them and thinking maybe I'll switch it out. Um, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do. You can obviously do whatever you want and whichever one you like. If you are replicating this, you can do it any way you want it to. So here they are hanging on my two front doors and I absolutely love the way they turned out. For this first project, I'm going to be actually recreating a look and I'm going to be using this picture that my friend gave me but uh, she thrifted it for $6 and the look that I'm going to be recreating is from a pottery barn. I love the color of this vase as well as those aspen uh, three branches now as you can see the tree branches are on sale for $45 but the vase is $212 so a little out of my price range well not just a little out of my price range a lot out of my price range but I figured I could probably achieve the look uh, with um, a little bit of creativity so I'm going to start off by painting this um, picture I originally was going to use acrylic paint but um, the shiny surface I would have had to apply maybe a Mod Podge or something first uh, or so I've decided after I saw that it wasn't really working I've decided to just go ahead and paint it with um, some chalk paint and I also added a little bit of flour to the chalk paint to thicken it even more to it to give it that um, almost like um, stone look. So I'm going to give this one coat first. I'm going to let this coat completely dry. As you can see, it is covering it, but it's still um, some of the stuff is showing through. So it will definitely need one more coat after this one. So it's all painted, just adding finishing touches, and I did add um, a little bit of paint on the inside, especially the part that's going to be showing. So I'm going to let this dry, and while that's drying, I did go out into my garden, and I got a couple branches. Uh, these were all dried up, so I did not cut any fresh ones, uh, ones that were still, uh, had leaves on them. So I am going to be adding my own leaves kind of trying to recreate that branch look i picked up these leaves at dollarama for dollar fifty and i picked up three packages i did only end up using two of them and i did um, make three branches so since the branches were free uh, and the leaves cost me three dollars. I think that's a significant saving. I know that it's not exactly the same look. You can definitely go and see if you can find the exact same leaves. Uh, you could even use tissue paper if you can find leaves. I think that would work as well. But this was uh, gave me the look that I was going for. Uh, and uh, I do love these uh, maple leaves. They're not overly... They have a really nice color. And you can also paint these leaves if you wanted to, let's say, have burgundy leaves or and create more of that afloral look florals that are so popular right now. You could even 
kind of go that way that route as well so i'm going to be using the um just hot glue to attach these um leaves this is a very <laughs> this does take a while to do and make sure you don't burn your fingers i did a few times so be very careful probably some sort of a heat resistant gloves would definitely be very helpful here but i think um the little bit of uh, burning your fingers is well worth the way this ended up looking. Since it's such a repetitive work, um, I did do only show you one branch, but like I said, I did make three of these. I just did not want it to bore you with the same, um, same thing over and over and over. I also would like to mention, if you are stopping by my channel from Sandra's, welcome. If you're stopping by my channel for the very first time, or even returning uh, um, subscriber, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. If you are not subscribed, I would love it if you considered uh, subscribing and making sure that notification bell is on, so that way you get notified when I post my DIYs. I typically post once a week, um, trying to be on schedule. Uh, I have tons of inspirations that I would like to share. Sometimes I am a little bit short on time. Uh, so make sure that bell notification is on so that way you get notified when these videos pop up because I would absolutely love to have you be part of my YouTube family and here you can find lots of uh, high-end decor dupes as well as some furniture makeovers and uh, Dollar Tree DIYs here and there. So like I said, I hope you consider subscribing and becoming part of my YouTube family. So about 15 minutes later, I am just finishing it up and then I'm going to move on to my picture and finish that project up. So it had time to dry and now I'm going to add another coat of this chalk paint uh, and then I'm going to do a, another technique on it while it's still wet. I absolutely love doing um, any type of vase or pitcher, even like bottles. Uh, I make make them over kind of do I love make doing makeovers because I think these items can be so expensive and sometimes you can get similar look sometimes even the same look for fraction of the price you can find lots of different types of vases at thrift stores even dollar stores carry um, interesting uh, styles of vases um, I had a lot of success this year at garage sales and it's just such an easy way to add a high-end look to your decor and with a little bit of paint maybe a little bit of flour a little bit of dirt and you can create beautiful beautiful pieces so once it's painted i'm going to add some to the same tray where i had my chalk paint some chocolate brown acrylic paint as well as some black acrylic paint and, and then i'm going to use my crafting sponge that's wet and i'm going to just um, mix the paint kind of dab it on both all the paints that are in there and go over the whole vase with this sponge almost like blending all the colors on it i did a similar project um couple weeks ago on a smaller vase um, but um, it's just amazing to see how similar techniques give you such different look uh, results and looks so i'm going to just randomly cover the vase with uh, this uh, paint in some spots i went heavy with the uh, one paint and lighter with the other the others uh, time i went the opposite and sometimes i just went very light with both colors together and it's important to blend it really well together so that way it looks like it's meant to be there and then while the paint was still wet, after I was done uh, sponging stuff on and blending it, I added some flour to it and just pretty much sprinkled flour all over 
the vase it's okay if some areas you put more and some areas you put less um, because you're going to be dusting the flower off once the piece is completely dry I feel like the flower blends the color even more together, kind of ties everything in, and it gives it that stone aged look. So once it was completely dry, I just took a stippling brush, um, a brand new one, and just brushed all, well, most of the flower off. There was some stuff that stayed, and then I just took a rag and try to rub a little bit off you don't want to completely take it off but you don't want big clumps because it will be falling off on your furniture um, while you're using it for decorating and here is what the vase look like or the picture looks like or completed with the branches in it and here is to remind you what I was trying to recreate so this would have cost me uh, over $300 if I was to buy it as is on this picture but mine came in under $10 with all the supplies that I used for my next project I'm going to be making a wreath wreaths can be quite expensive especially from high-end stores and as you can see this one at Creighton Barrel is $239 which is way out of my price range I absolutely love the look of it and I was very excited um, when I found these flowers from Dollarama because I thought the leaves were very much the same shape the color is a little bit different but that's okay it's still very much fall color and I kind of like the burnt orange look so these were three dollars I did purchase seven of them I did only end up using five of them so fifteen dollars the wreath form on the wreath from um, Crate and Barrel is a grapevine wreath form I couldn't find one uh, that was reasonably priced and I had this one on hand that I got at Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree for $1.50 so I thought this would work just as good um, I'm going to also use some wire as well as some hot glue to attach these stems so I did cut the stems off just to make it a little bit easier to work with and I'm going to be adding stems all around on all the the wires so there's one two three four of them so four different rows of um, of flowers and I do have a bit of a color variations with the stems that I picked up some are burnt orange and some are more like the burnt green color so I think it's going to look really nice once I am all done and this cost me so I got five stems at three dollars so fifteen dollars and then the wreath form was dollar fifty plus some glue so well under twenty dollars with tax and I'm very, very excited how it turned out for the same size wreaths. Wreath, I think I did really well. I would love to know what you guys think. So as I, was, I mentioned, I used both hot glue and a little bit of craft wire. Uh, in some spots, I just added craft wire to hold it in spot in place while the hot glue, so that gave hot glue a chance to work. But in some areas, I did just use uh, the wire because it, I was able to wedge it in with the other stems that were already in there. I love making wreaths. I love using wreaths uh, in my decor. I have done uh, many wreaths on my channel before and I have to say this was probably one of my favorite ones the way it turned out. It's just so I think classy and uh, not tacky at all and I just love it and if you really wanted to achieve that burgundy look you could always get like a plum color paint and uh, paint all the leaves um, that color I think that would look look good and work good as well and that that way you would really come close to duping the one from Crate and Barrel but I was quite happy with these colors I love these colors and using them all throughout the house and I was left over with two stems which I think I will definitely be using in a vase 
or maybe creating another DIY. So once I was uh, gone all the way around um, with these um, uh, stems, just really trying to make sure that there's no bare spots um, and trying to, like I said, fill in. And I was going the same direction, so all of them, all the leaves were kind of um, drooping the same to to the same. Um, side so that way it's it's a little bit neater but then once like I said once I went all the way around I did cut some of the stems in half and I was just filling in the bare spots so that way none of the, there was nothing no patches of uh, like holes showing through or empty patches of empty spots and so you, you could also wedge these into where the wire is or you can even put a little bit of hot glue on it and then stick it in there it will stay in place my wreath was going to be used inside so i wasn't too worried about when when damaging it if it was left outside and once everything was covered the way i liked it i just went around and just fluffed up some of the leaves that were maybe pushed down pulled them out so they're they're all nice and fluffy and also you want at this time to get rid of any hot glue that might have been uh, left on the little strings from the hot glue and here it is. I absolutely, like I said, love it. I think it's one of my favorite wreaths I have made on this channel. I just love how folly the colors are. And here is the reminder of what the original look like. So as you can see, the leaves are quite similar uh, to the leaves that I used. Uh, the color is a little bit different. Um, obviously not a little bit different, a lot different but I love it nevertheless. This DIY that I'm going to be working on has to be my favorite and we are going back to Pottery Barn and I'm going to be recreating this leaf. So it is called the Brass Leaf Object and this can be on its own or it can fit a candle in there. So I was quite excited when I picked up this leaf thrifting for $2.50. But if you cannot find that one, there is this one at Dollar Tree for $1.50, which I think would work just as well. Because I always feel like chances of finding the exact same thing thrift that I thrifted are um, very slim. So I like to give you another um, choice or another option that you could use. So I was going to use an acrylic paint on it. Again, it wasn't really um, doing the coverage that I wanted. So I went ahead and spray painted it. And I do have a heavy duty fan right above me and a window. Um, it was raining outside, so I just wanted to get it done. And the color that I was using was metallic gold from Michaels. And then I went ahead and added some black antiquing wax to it once it had dried. And just uh, use a brush to add um, by dabbing it. And then I did go ahead at the end and just kind of did some brush strokes through the um, wax just to blend it all in. I absolutely love with the way it turned out. I think it's going to look fabulous with my fall decor. And like I said, this is definitely one of my favorites. And as you can see, uh, the color and everything looks pretty close. I know the shape is a little bit different, but I think it gives you the same idea. Well, I hope... For my next DIY, I picked up these jack-o'-lanterns uh, at Dollarama for $5. And I wanted to create a bit of a concrete black look on them. I've seen a lot of these um, pumpkins on Instagram. Um, some people painted them black. Some people painted them more gray colored. I wanted to go with black. So I... Um, use the same Athenian black paint and just mixed in some sand into it just to make the paint rougher almost give um, more texture to it now I have um, with the first one I painted the outside 
first now you can leave the orange on the inside I've seen pumpkins like that for sale uh, where the outside is black and the inside is orange however I wasn't loving that look so I did end up adding a little bit of paint on the inside didn't do a full coverage but just a little bit to um, cover it up now these are not lighted but um, I did buy the little uh, battery operator votive candles that I'm going to be adding to them and another thing that I'm thinking about adding to them is some rocks to the bottom just to weigh them down so they're not flopping all over my front porch when the wind hits them I just think this was such a, a neat update to them I love the way they turned out and to be quite honest with you, you could probably go to your local thrift store and see if they actually have even already light up ones. Um, I just um, didn't make it to the thrift store. And when I saw them at Dollarama, I thought that they were a great price for what they were and the size that they were. These can range, I was looking online, anywhere from $20 up to $110 at Pottery Barn. So spending $5 and plus 50 cents for a tea light, um, battery operated tea light and a little bit of paint uh, is not a bad deal. So like I said, I have two of these. So with this second one, I did paint the inside first. It was just find it a little bit easier. Um, then painting the outside and then the inside. And this gave just the right amount of spooky vibes to my front. The inspiration for my first DIY came from Miggy and Co. And as you can see, their print was $42. And it is a bit of a different look in, inside. It's more like, a, like the picture says, storm on the lake. Mine is more in the field. <laughs> but the inspiration was there. And I have found a free printable, which I will link it down below. You just have to sign up for an email. Uh, for it to be sent to you I will link the, the website down below and she has tons of different prints to choose from but the McGee and Co was my inspiration so I've printed it off and then I took some Mod Podge and I had painted the picture with the Mod Podge to give it that oil look I'm sure I as I as you may know I'm not the first one to do this but it is my first time trying to do it I think I've done it before on uh, uh, gift banks from dollar store when I was uh, adding them to signs and things like that and um, uh, this was definitely my first time doing it on a picture that I have printed I have a laser printer it is not the greatest printer in the world but I think the picture turned out really good and the frame that I'm gonna be using came from Dollar Tree um, I would have loved to have found a vintage frame to use uh, at maybe a thrift store but I wasn't so lucky so I just resorted to the frames that I had on hand so my price for this was free as I just printed a print and everything else I had on hand. Uh, and here is the frame that I am using and I'm going to use spun gold uh, paint to paint with it as well as a brush and a uh, some Kleenex. You can find prints if you can print, print them. You can also um, find um, gift bags are a great um, source for uh, sometimes great landscapes or any picture you might want to include in your decor um, greeting cards or something a little bit smaller and sometimes even placemats I have found some pretty uh, neat looking placemats at Dollar Tree that could uh, totally be transformed into a picture to put in a frame and if you uh, are looking for something specific, Etsy is a great place to check for different types of prints. And uh, you can also buy those, download them and print them just the, pretty much the same way I printed this one. I have been wanting to do this for a while and um, I just uh, 
current, uh, recently bought some new cartridge for my printer, so I thought it was a good, a good time to do it. You, if you don't have a printer, you can also send it away to get printed. I honestly don't know where I could send mine to get printed in town because Costco had gotten rid of their uh, photo uh, development center. The where well, maybe you can still send it to them. They just don't have it in store. I would have to really look into it. But the size that I was looking for, it was perfectly fine to print it on my printer. So now I'm wiping the paint kind of off and damping it on. I'm trying to get into all the crevices. There is a bit of a design on the inside edge. So I wanted to really uh, have that stand out so that way it uh, has that vintage look. It is an absolutely gorgeous day outside and I really wanted to do this voiceover out here but I think every plane has decided to fly over during my voiceover now. So I'm going to try it a little bit more and if they keep coming I'm going to have to go inside and do this voiceover. So here it is, I'm just dabbing the paint now just to give it that aged vintage look. And once the picture dries and the frame dries I'm going to put it together I have decided to style it in my kitchen uh, to break up some of that weight uh, that's uh, my backsplash in the kitchen I love my backsplash but sometimes with the counter being white and the backsplash being white I'm always looking for ways to add color and texture into the space and here it is, here it's how it looks. I absolutely love it. It is exactly what I was going for. And the nice thing is at such an inexpensive price, I can definitely um, redo it for every season. Two DIYs are very similar and I got an inspiration, which I'm sure you've seen it on Instagram and TikTok as well, but these are the Pottery Barn ghost dupes uh, now two of these ghosts at pottery barn were around 120 dollars they uh, however are out of stock uh, i decided to recreate mine with some dollar tree and uh, materials and some items that i've had on hand so i did get this ghost from dollar tree and i'm just cutting off the hands and i will also rip off the styrofoam head i will not be using that instead i had this clear flat ornament from michael's um, my friend actually picked these up for me uh, at the end of the season last year i think the whole box of them i think there was like 30 of them was i think it was like under five dollars so i just cut a little bit on each side just enough so i can spread it out open so it slides over this paper towel holder that I picked up at Dollar Tree and now I'm going to drape this over it and I'm just going to trim the material the fabric so it's not that long and I actually want to double it up so I'm going the the fabric that I trim off I'm going to drape it over as well but first I'm going to attach these um, arms and they did have a wire that I just wrapped around you can also add a little bit of glue I did have to add a little bit of hot glue to one side just because it kept sliding off not necessarily to hold it in place glue it in place but more or less hold it in place so it doesn't slide down I put the hot glue underneath it uh, to create almost like a stopper for the arm to slide down again my scissors are winning in life here <laughs> i can't seem to get the right scissors ever these are brand new and as you can see they do not work well at all on this fabric um, and they did come from a fabric store so maybe i'm just not meant to have scissors that cut well so as you saw i removed the axe the the cutoff part and now i'm going to add that first and then i'm going to drape over this uh, other part i am also going to trim the little um the little rope on top 
that's there to hang up the ghost I'm going to trim that off as well but I wanted to have him hold a little pot now these I picked up during um, in March during uh, St. Patty's but I thought it looked like a little which is cauldron and it looks like he's holding it I will probably have to fix this once I actually display it for my next DIY, I'm going to be using this linkable chain from Dollar Tree. I wanted to really include this DIY because right now you can buy these because they are part of the Halloween decor. And I'm also going to be using this metallic gold paint. This can this piece of um, decor can be used for fall or really any season. I just wanted to include it now because this is when these are available for purchase at the Dollar Tree for dollar fifty. So I have spray painted this gold. It took about three different turns, so three different coats, just to make sure the whole thing is covered. And my inspiration for this came from several place, places. Amber Interiors has it, uh, Pottery Bar have them, and they're these linkable chains. Um, you can take this apart and have a couple different sizes here, or you can leave it as is, the whole length of it. It's fairly long. I did separ end up separating mine into two pieces, so you could t totally create couple different styles of it you can make it look like wood you can make it pa uh, painted black really it is completely up to you how you uh, uh, finish this I just thought it was such a great purchase for dollar fifty it's already linked up for you uh, and you can take your creativity and so just to have it. a look at these again at amber interiors they are around five hundred dollars they are different sizes obviously and then at um, Pottery Barn, these wood, rustic wood ones are $289. Mine cost me $1.50 as I had the spray paint already on hand. I think that's pretty good savings. And that this way, you can make them the color that you want that go with your style. So once I have them spray painted, I brought them inside. And I wanted to make mine look a little bit brassy. So I wanted to add some of this black wax. I was just going to brush it very, very lightly uh, on there just to add a little bit of darkness, just like the um, brass looks where it's kind of almost banged up a little bit, it has a little bit of a darker uh, spots. So that, that is what I was adding here. These decorative chains are super trendy now, and you probably seen them besides um, uh, Amber Interiors and, and Potter Barn, McGee and Co. carries them, as well as Anthropology. And as you can see, you saw, they are pretty pricey. And making one yourself is so much more affordable. And like I, like I said before, you can choose that perfect finish to match your space. So after applying the paint and wax for that H brass look, I like to go in with a bit of a uh, different gold paint. I'm using yellow gold paint as well as the spun gold paint to really make it pop. Just a light touch of gold in certain areas adds dimension and gives it even more of that authentic brass feel. It is all about layering the details and the steps makes such a difference. This technique is great because it gives you your DIYs that high-end custom look like something you would see at these high-end store but for a fraction of the price. Look at how gorgeous this turned out. The gold paint adds just the right amount of shine without being too over the top. It catches the light beautifully giving the piece that true vintage brass look. You can see the depth and texture from the layers of wax and paint, making it look like something you'd find in a high-end store. It's got that perfect mix of age elegance and modern style. Next up, we're going to work on this adorable pumpkin cunning board look. My inspiration for this piece came from anthropology, but you can also find similar styles at Bat and Bath bed bath and beyond and even a close look-alike on etsy the best part this cut okay from dollarama for just about $1.50 talk about a steal 
Now, this one won't necessarily be used as a real cutting board, but we're going to make it look like one. I love decorating my kitchen with these seasonal boards. I've even made one for Christmas and they're such a charming touch. If you wanted to feel more substantial, you could always add a few of these pumpkin cutouts together to make it thicker. And the fun part is you can stain it any color you like. For this one, I'm going to give it that vintage look by distressing it before I apply the stain. There are a few different techniques that you can do here to stain it. I am using my Minvax gel stain in aged oak just because I had this on hand and it is kind of drying out. So I did want it to uh, use it up uh, so that way I can just toss it once I'm done. Um, you want to move... You can see somewhat of a grain here, so you want to definitely move in that direction. I was kind of going all over the place because I was trying to, to get the grooves to stain in inside as well. But once I'm done, I do go with the direction of the stain. You could also water down your paint that you want to use to stain use it as a stain you want to water it quite quite a bit apply it and then wipe it off that will work as well and then you can layer it more if you find that it's not quite where you'd want it to be you can also add a darker paint to certain areas that will give it that vintage look I used a black acrylic paint to add that vintage look and I added it with a rag and just wetted the rag first, dipped it into the paint and then went over the edges of the pumpkin and then also inside all those cuts that I've made. I think this just give it, gives it a, such a nice vintage look. Like I said, I'm not going to be using these i have not seen cutting boards last year i found a christmas cutting board at home sense for about twenty dollars i have not seen them yet at home sense here in town but i never ended up using the cutting board anyways it just to um, put it up i just put it up against my uh, wall as a part of decoration so i've decided that i can just do this with my pumpkin that i make here because i have lots of cutting boards and cheese boards and all sorts of stuff that i can use if i need to use it for anything this will purely be a decoration now if you have a laser machine or you are very handy in cutting your own stuff you could definitely cut a pumpkin shape yourself and make your own cutting board um, with just uh, natural wood just make sure that whatever stain or color you put on that cutting board it is food safe and here it is friends i'm absolutely in love with how this pumping cutting board turned out the distressing really gives it that vintage well-loved look and the stain adds a beautiful rich color that's perfect for fall it looks just like something you'd find in anthro at anthropology I was very excited to use this as part of my fall kitchen decor. It's that perfect seasonal touch that adds warmth and charm to the space. From Dollarama, I loved it because of its odd shape. Um, it's just, you know, not your typical pumpkin shape. And it was, I believe these were $3, but correct me if I'm wrong, they might have been $4. I don't know what happened to the price tag. And like I said, I love the shape of it. I absolutely hate the color of it. So I thought I'm going to give it a new life. I went to HomeSense and found these pumpkins, which I thought they looked really nice. They were $24.99, so about the same size. I think they were a smidgen smaller but they were the right color so i thought i can make these into this one into those so for the makeover i'm going to use the americana decor chalky finish uh it's in color new life and i picked this up at a dollar store that's called uh, your dollar store with more they tend to have really neat things there a little bit more expensive than dollar m and dollar tree but lots of uh, different stuff and then i'm also going to use my annie sloan dark wax any antiquing wax would work 
Um, I'm, I would like to use more of a chalk paint. I was actually going to go with Chateau Grey for Manny Sloan, but it has completely dried out. I did pour some water in it in hopes that it will uh, come back to life, but we'll see. And then I'm also going to use my... Um, Oof, I just washed these so they're a little bit wet still. My paintbrush, this is just my go-to paintbrush for um, chalk paint. And then I'm also going to obviously use a bowl where I can just add the chalk paint in. So are you guys all ready and set up for fall? Have you started decorating? I'm almost done decorating. I did know that I was going to add a couple more pieces after I DIY them, but that's why everybody's going to just have to come back to my home tour to pick that out. And you can see how I decorated my whole home for fall or any season over on my home channel, which is linked down below. It's so um, at home with Sonia, or it used to be called... Um, DIY, um, domestic Diva Home. I have uh, just recently started changing all the names over to Life with Sonia, DIYs with Sonia, At Home with Sonia, and things like that. So the home tour is on At Home with Sonia. I think, I don't know if I said that or if I did I say it, Life with Sonia. I'm sure it's going to be on there as well. So, like I said, the reason why I wanted chalk paint was because it does do a bit better job in covering up. You don't need to do as many coats as you would maybe with acrylic paint. Now, another neat idea would be to... Um, add some cornstarch to your paint then then you would get a little bit more texture in your paint uh, which would also I think look pretty neat on here now I will be showing that technique if you're not familiar with it but if you are an avid crafter you are familiar with that um, in my next DIY uh, when I'm gonna be working on a vase and I can't wait to show you guys the vase that I had picked up thrifted I also wanted to share with you I did find at Kirkland home um, this pumpkin and it was $17.99 on sale a regular price I believe was $30 so not overly expensive, but still a great saving of making my own. And for the little crevices, I am using a different brush just to get in here. Now, as you can see, I will be needing another coat simply because um, of the type of the material that the pumpkin is made out of. It's a little bit of a smooth. You could possibly rough it up a little bit just so the paint sticks to it a little bit better but I'll just let it dry completely and then I'll add another coat to it. I think it's already looking better. The green is a little bit brighter than what I would go with but don't worry that's where, where the dark wax comes in. So well, so this definitely needs one more coat. So this will need a bit more drying and then we can finish it off after. So here it is all painted up and now I'm going to use my dark wax. And I'm going to work in sections. And I'm putting a generous amount. To show you, I think that looks absolutely stunning. So I'm gonna continue. I'm just gonna add a bit more right around the stem. And I think some of that orange popping out is nice too because you know how there's those pumpkins with orange 
uh, kind of just showing up here and there and I kind of like that idea too so I think this turned out really nice I'm just going to paint the little stem now I'm gonna use the Coco by Rust-Oleum Now I want to go get some more pumpkins because I just love the way this one looks and for four dollars you can't go wrong. Why is this mercury pumpkin or gourd? gourd? Uh, I thrifted this a couple years back. I think it was like three dollars and I've used it in my decor quite a bit but I am just finding last I think last year and even this year I am not reaching for it. I love the shape of it, uh, so I thought, well, might as well give it a new life before I decide to chuck it or give it to somebody else. I'm pretty sure I can give it a new life that I can still use it for a couple more years. So back at home, back at home sense, I did see one that um, I really like. Now it was wooden, but I really liked the way it looked, and I thought. I can definitely make this out of this one right away when I saw it this one came to my mind and I thought for sure I can make this look very similar to that also wanted to share that I found a similar item at Pottery Barn at 84 regular price on sale for 67 so this is a pretty good savings for an item I was gonna throw out so back to painting and this time I'm going to be using any Sloan chalk paint in old ochre. Ochre, I think. It is a very creamy, almost beige-ish white. This is what that looks like. And I'm going to use the chalked white paint. So I'm going to take this outside and spray paint it. And then I'm gonna come back. I'll show you the spray painting process as well. I don't know if you can see, but there's condensation in the pumpkin because it is like 42 degrees outside. Probably not the best time to spray paint. So here it is, all spray painted. I did not spray paint the top. I'm going to do something different. On the top so I just left it which gave me the ability to actually it is hold. completely dried to the touch anyways <laughs> I think it's mostly dry it is dry so now I'm going to add the old ochre chalk paint and I'm going to go right into the crevices with or on this well I'm gonna try to go on the side of the crevices but I'm not sure that I will be able to actually might be just easier to go into the crevices I'm not uh, adding a ton of paint it's more of a building process you can build up to it while well, the paint is sliding off don't think it's quite dry in some areas yet so I'm just gonna dab it on so I was going to talk to you guys about why I haven't been here for so long so if you're not following along on um, Instagram you probably missed it but long story short I used to do home daycare then in 2021 I took a break for about 18 months and uh, I decided to go back 
So I went back into home daycare in March. It took me about uh, just under a month to fill up. And I've been going strong ever since. Um, it has been a bit of an adjustment. I did go get licensed through the region in Canada. You, well, in Ontario anyways, you cannot hold a daycare license yourself. You have to go through a, day, a licensing agency. So I decided to go through the region. So it's been a bit more work in a sense of paperwork and just making sure that certain things are running properly in the house not that those things weren't important before but there's just some areas that let me just be quite honest with you that I think are a little bit ridiculous but you know you have to comply so um, so like I said it's been a bit of an adjustment for for me again and I am a creature of routines and um, habits and all that stuff and when something throws a wrench in it um, I tend to uh, takes me a while to kind of get my uh, bearings back up and I don't even know if I'm saying that right but just to you know get things up, back up and running again I know it's doable I've done this with daycare before uh, and with other businesses running alongside of it so I know that I can manage to do it it's just trying to figure out what works for me and also I had a big adjustment with sleep time before I used to have you know two, two and a half solid hours that I could concentrate on other things while the kids slept like maybe cleaning the house or working edit on editing a video and stuff like that um, I did have a child that did not nap and she was a little bit um, I could not leave her um, unattended or unoccupied like un unentertained um, at all so um, that kind of took away that time from me so but she is starting school in um, next week so I am getting the time back because everybody else does nap so I am hoping that I can uh, I'll get s some editings done and then probably do recordings at night just like I'm doing this one and then go from there just wanted to let you guys know that that is what's been going on I'm just trying to figure things out and what works and what doesn't work so I think that turned out really really nice um, it does really increase the the little depths but I'm feeling like I need a little bit something else I'm thinking what if I once this dries again um, took a dark wax and just added a little little tiny bits into it and maybe that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to actually use the dark wax for the little stem anyways so I'm gonna work on that while the chalk paint dries kind of like the way this turned out it almost gave it a kind of a bronzish look I don't mind that at all I think that's looking kind of nice. I might have to use some paint at the bottom. So I'm going to continue doing this all around. And then I'll show you what it looks like and see if I fix these little cracks or if I'm just going to leave them as they are. I'll probably add a little bit of white paint to them just because they are, they're not looking very nice. Okay, 
Okay, so as you saw, I went over the dark wax to fix some of those scrape offs with the ochre, old ochre, and I think that turned out really, really good. I can't wait to show you in the daylight uh, and with all my decor. I just love, love the way this looks. I think it's going to match perfectly now in my decor and i couldn't be more happy and here is what all of my things look like in my decor and if you want to see more decorating videos make sure you head on over to my home channel second ghost i'm using the tomato wire garden wire thing and you're supposed to all well i was gonna use a styrofoam ball which i had in hand but swore i had one at home came home got ready to diy realized i did not have one so i ended up improvising and using this this one which i covered in moss but it's still the styrofoam ball the right size it's just it's covered in moss because it's part of my decor um, so i did twist tie the top just to keep it together and then i'm using one of my old white curtains to drape over it i was going to cut it but the way it looks i actually don't mind it to be a little bit longer um, and then over top of it i am going to add some cheesecloth just to make it look a little bit more spookier and again it was one of those things i swore i had it then i couldn't find it and then i did find it so that was good because dollar store did not have any cheesecloth and um, it was just the right size i it's not covering everything it's just covering like parts of him which i kind of like that look um, i didn't want it to be as long as the curtain was so you can use a sheet you can use a blanket you can use really anything i happen to have the curtain so that's what i did and for now the pottery barns ghost only has eyes i did add a mouth as well so he matches my other ghost and i'm just cutting out some construction paper and hot gluing it to the cheesecloth i think he turned out so cute you can also add lights the pottery barn one has lights underneath i'm not quite sure where i'm gonna place him outside so depending on where he is uh, i might add lights but i might just leave him as is is these gorgeous fall pumpkins inspired by pottery barn you all know how pricey their decor can be but i found these irregular shaped pumpkins at dollarama for uh, five dollars and the smaller ones were 375 and I was able to make them over for large one for under $6 and small one for around $4. I used acrylic paint in custom mix of brown, yellow, red, blue, and white to get that perfect warm fall colors. I applied two coats and let them dry completely between each one. You can add some flour or baking soda if you liked texture, but I kept mine smooth and the stems let them let them as they, I left them as they are because they have that perfect whimsical feel just like pottery barn i painted the others in a cream color as well as a light beige color but i did that off camera so i don't bore you with all the painting and i just love how these turned out and they're perfect for my front porch if you would like to check out how I decorate in my front porch, make sure you head on over to my decor uh, home channel. Also, I will link a green pumpkin that I DIY'd a while, last year up in a corner if you want to check out that one, how it turned out. Next, I wanted to recreate the stunning bronze cast iron branch from Pottery and Barn. Instead of spending a fortune, I went to my garden found a giant branch and spray painted it with black and bronze and tink paint. I started with solid black base coat, then lightly went over it with bronze, and then followed by another light coat of black. This DIY was so easy and I love how it turned out. It's going to look amazing in my Halloween decor this year.
For our last project, we're tackling these iconic Pottery Barn jack-o'-lanterns. These can cost a small fortune, but I found some thrifty pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns that were perfect for this project. If you can't find thrifted ones, you can easily use craft pumpkins from Michael's or similar stores. For the paint, I mix brown, red, yellow, and white to create a custom terracotta color. I carved mine just like a real pumpkin using a marker to sketch the face and X Zacto knife to cut them out. I also cut out a hole at the back so I can add some lights. I'm just using string lights for the pumpkins. And now it's time to paint them and like to give them two good coats. And you can use any sponge you want. And as far as the paint, like I said, it's a custom paint. So you just mix the colors until you reach the desired look that you're going for. And also, don't forget to, if you are cutting out, don't forget to paint inside the little mouth, nose, and eyes so no white shows. While the first one was drying, I took the time to paint all of my thrifted jack-o'-lanterns that I got from the thrift store. After two coats, I let it half dry before sparkling flour over it to texture. Then dusted it off for a rustic aged look. And that's a wrap friends. I hope you enjoyed this mega fall DIY compilation as much as I enjoy creating these pieces. There's just something about fall decor that makes the space feel so warm and inviting, don't you think? If you try out any of these Pottery Barn dupes or get inspired to create your own, I would love to see your creations. Tag me on Instagram or share them in the comments below. And don't forget to check out the Life Bases Mini Electric Scrubber if you're looking for an easier way to keep your home clean after all your all your DIY fun. Thank you so much for watching and if you're not already subscribed make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my upcoming seasonal decor ideas. See you next time and happy folk decorating.